you kind of forgot that there's games being played until everybody gets here, didn't you? That was fun. Mariners win 10 to nothing. They improve to 54 and 51 on the season, and they take the first of the three game series against the dreadful Chicago White Sox. Let's go over the scoring plays. The Mariners, who fun first inning. Jason Bossler singles to right to score Jorge Polanco and Cal Rally, 2 0. Mitch Garver doubles home Mitch Hanniger, 3 0. Josh Rojas homers to right center with two batters on. That makes it 6 0. And hey, Dylan Moore goes back to back with him. He homers to left center. And hey, Victor Robles makes it back to back to back with an absolute bullet into left field to make it 8 0. Mariners add two more for fun in the fourth. Jorge Polanco homers to left center with big dumper on base. 10 0. Mariners win. Okay, the negatives. Thanks for absolutely nothing, Los Angeles Dodgers. Astros win. Gain, not gained. Keep ground, keep even, but no gain. No gain. Run up the middle, stuffed. Number two, my gosh, the White Sox are bad. You and I have won as many games as the Chicago White Sox have in the second half of the year, and I know, after the All-Star break. They're dreadful. I think they've scored 12 runs in 20 games, something along those lines. Hoof McCoop. I mean, I'm glad the Mariners are playing them right now. Mariners, by the way, are 27 wins ahead of the Chicago White Sox. So I'm willing to suggest that the White Sox might not make the playoffs this year. And if you're really looking for a nitpick here, and you would really have to be looking for a nitpick, uh, the offense after the first inning wasn't great. You only score the two runs. It's pretty hard to complain about a 10 nothing win. But if you're looking for something, hey, after Drew Thorpe, who Drew Thorpe has been good, after he exited the game, uh, the Mariners didn't do a whole heck of a lot. If you're looking for a negative, I'm not looking for a negative. I'm always looking for a positive, and one of the biggest positives for me is simply Seattle because they provide the best in Seattle sports gear. Great stuff for the Mariners, of course. Great stuff for the Seahawks, the Huskies, the Cougars, the Storm, the Sonics, the Kraken. You can find it all at Simply Seattle. Use code M O L L Y W H O P 1 5 because you're going to find all that great stuff. You're going to say, wow, this is a great deal. You'd be tempted to just check out, but don't do that. Enter that code and you save 15% off your order. It's a great deal from great people. It shows you're supporting the show. It shows you're supporting a very nice local business. Thank you so much, Simply Seattle. I mean, it would be easy to just go, you know, you're just really looking forward to seeing Randy Rosarina and Jimmy Garcia, not Yimmy, Jimmy. I've made that mistake already. And I would ask, please, that you go watch those videos because I recorded trade reaction to the trade for Randy Rosarina the trade for Jimmy Garcia, and also the trade of Ryan Stanek. Really would appreciate the support on those. Those videos are doing well for me, and I would appreciate them getting into those uh, those nice numbers. So if you haven't checked them out, you want my thoughts on the trade, my thoughts on what they gave up, I would really appreciate you checking that out. Uh, terrific offensive effort. I know it's, like I said, after the second inning, you only scored two runs. But you put up a 10 spot. I don't care how you do it. I don't care what innings have big inning or big run totals. It doesn't matter. You put up a 10 spot. You did well. I'm just growing infatuated with Victor Robles. And I would be tempted to leave him in the top spot. And having when Randy or Rosarina gets here on Saturday, having him hit second. Move big dumper to third. You know, Polanco fourth, probably. That's where I would be. When Julio and JP come back, you've got an interesting little situation going on. Because <clears throat> Victor Robles, assuming they don't make a trade for another outfielder, and I would certainly not hate it whatsoever, Victor Robles has earned everyday playing time. I would probably, when the lineup is healthy, assuming they don't make any more moves, and I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I do think they'll add at least one more bat. 
But right now, I would probably go. So I know Julio's not going to hit leadoff. That's what I would do. That That's just not going to happen. I would probably go a Rosarina first, Julio second. Well, maybe I'd have Julio third. Crawford's hitting ninth. That's what I know. I, I don't want to make this a 20-minute video, so I won't go over it. But Victor Robles deserves to play every day right now. Strong game for Big Dumper. Great to see Polanco driving the baseball again. He's looked so much better as of late. Uh, Mitch Garver reaches five times. Love to see that. Great to see Josh Rojas drive a baseball. I don't think we've talked enough about how bad Josh Rojas has been since that red hot start. He's been basically the opposite of Randy Rosarina. We talked about how bad Rose, Randy Rosarina was at the start for Tampa Bay. And he's been among the better hitters in baseball since basically the middle of June or excuse me, the middle of May, definitely since the start of June for sure. Um, but he gets that big three run homer. And I think it's worth pointing out how that first inning was going because Robles gets out. Rally gets on. Polanco gets on. Haniger gets on. And with the bases loaded and one out, Luke Rayleigh strikes out. And you're kind of thinking, and it's easy to forget this, but you're kind of thinking, oh no, <laughs> is this going to be another one of those days? But good for Jason Vossler to rip that single and to get those two runs in. And it's, again, easy to forget because you end up scoring eight more. You end up scoring six more in the inning. But without that hit, you're talking about another failed bases loaded situation, another situation where they go scoreless after scoring all of three runs in the previous series. I don't think you can say enough good things about that hit. Now, Vossler goes hitless afterwards, and I think Vossler could be a decent little bench bat. I don't want him playing every day for the Seattle Mariners, but I think he can be a decent little bench bat. But that was huge. To get those two runs, and they keep the inning alive, and then Garver lashes the double, Josh Rojas, Dylan Moore, Victor Robles go back to back to back. Oh, that was fun. And again, Drew Thorpe has been good this year. I think he had five straight quality starts. And not just six innings of three-run baseball. A lot of just really solid outings. But the Mariners beat the crap out of him today. And it was awesome to see. Uh, we're going to end, of course, with you-know-who. Uh, Trent Thornton didn't look great. Gets out of it. Gabe Spire looked okay. But talk about low leverage situations. George Kirby. It's been so easy to forget about how good George Kirby is for a couple of reasons. Number one, because the offense is just stunk. And so you don't want to hear about how good the starting pitching has been. And number two, you know, the talk's been about Logan Gilbert. The talk's been about Luis Castillo. The talk's been about Andres Munoz. I think George Kirby somehow has gotten lost in the shuffle. But since those scuffles that he had on the road against the Orioles and the Nationals, I believe, yeah, George Kirby has been as good as any starter in baseball. He's dropped his ERA by 1.3 runs from that point. And what I've loved is, is that he's challenging hitters, but he's not just refusing to walk guys. And now look, he only issued the one walk. I had to tweet the word bum fuzzle for the 14th time this year. <laughs> but he's not just throwing strikes. Sometimes George Kirby in the past, I think, has fallen in love with just challenging guys. And he has the stuff. He has the fastball carry to do it. The velocity as well. But what I've loved from what I've seen from George Kirby, when he's at his best, he's changing hitters eye levels. And you saw the high fastball today. You saw, you saw how effective he was with that pitch. He also worked in a couple of decent breaking balls, and he took advantage of a White Sox lineup that is just absolutely dreadful. Just dreadful. George Kirby has been phenomenal. It stinks that the Mariners have, I don't want to say fallen apart, but they have come pretty close to it. They are... Hanging on for a thread. I think there's a reason why you saw the Mariners make two big moves 
today and yesterday. Because, man, their starting pitching has been good. Imagine where they are without this starting pitching. You know, you can focus on the 10 runs, and you should. It's great. Don't forget that George Kirby shoved tonight. And I'm not surprised, not even a little bit. But boy, they needed to win this one. <laughs> you really should sweep the Chicago White Sox. I'm not going to ask for a sweep on the road, especially for a team that's lost 12 games. The White Sox have to win sooner or later. But it's as close to a must-win series as I think you can have. This should have been at minimum a four and two week and five and one. Now the best you could do is three and three because of the borderline disaster you had against the angels. But you get this one, you get this one. Your chances of winning this series are outstanding. Hopefully the Dodgers can do some damage to the Astros. I haven't checked on the Rangers. Okay, Google, what's the Rangers score? Thank you, Blue Jays. Thank you so much, Neighbors to the North, for Jimmy Garcia and for that win. But hopefully, at the very least, you're just keeping pace with the Astros. But come on, Dodgers. Help us out. Help us out. And I'll close with this. I'm extremely happy with all of the moves the Mariners have made so far. I, I don't want to be mean to Ryan Stanek, but not watching Ryan Stanek is not my least favorite thing and acquiring a hitter that I have loved for a long time in Randy Rosarina for what I believe to be a very low price. I talked to a source. I was thinking about saving this for my Y enthusiasts. Sorry, my Y enthusiasts. I should have saved it for you, but uh, the, the names that I have heard for who the player to be named later doesn't change my opinion on the trade. At all. Love that deal. Love the Jimmy Garcia deal. I almost said Yimmy again. I love what they've done. They got to keep going. I'm not saying you have to make five or six more moves, but I'm saying you got to get at least either two more solid bats or one more really, really good bat. You know, I talked on KJR when I was hosting for the week that I thought the Mariners needed to get an A bat, a B bat, and a C bat. And Randy Rosarina to me is a B plus bat. So he's technically closer to B, but he's not far away from A. If you could get another B plus bat, I'd be really happy. If you could get an A bat and a C bat, I'd be ecstatic, ecstatic. And I think because of what they moved, they can do that. And I know I'm not talking about tonight's game now, but I think it's important. I'm very happy with what Seattle has done so far, but you can't be done. Can't be. I believe the pitching matchup tomorrow is Fetty Wu. And for those of you who are Familiar with a uh, musical artist named Fetty Wap. That matchup just absolutely makes me giggle. Fetty Woo. That matchup's a real trap game. I don't want to get a copyright. Uh, I entertain myself anyway. I'd appreciate if you hit like and subscribe. It's very much appreciated. Good one. Great one, in fact. Had to have it win. And yes, it's the White Sox. And yes, blah, 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 blah. They got it. They got it. It's good. Now go win the next two.